opioids are actually a class of medication that are really used to soothe pain. So traditionally, many of us know opioids as Percocet or oxycodone, Vicodin or hydrocodone, morphine, fentanyl. And the way they work is they bind to certain receptors in the brain. They cause this cascade of events. And then there's this large spike in a neurotransmitter called dopamine, which is associated with pleasure, euphoria, feeling of joy. Opioids are a really important part of pain management, and we don't want to pull them off the pharmacy shelves and not be able to give them. But because that dopamine spike is so high, it really causes such a euphoric feeling you can't get with other, well, with really regular activities. So when we go shopping, we hug a cuddly pet, or we have a really good meal, the dopamine naturally goes up in our brain. But it's not a match for how high the dopamine goes up when we take opioids. Is that why opioids are so addictive? That is why, Laura, yeah. They just cause such a profound reaction in the brain. They're just very potent, which is great when we use them for pain management, appropriate in consultation with the clinician. Now, you created an alternative program called the Alternatives to Opioids, or the ALTO program, and I understand it was used first at the St. Joseph's Regional Medical Center. What is the ALTO program? So the ALTO program is actually three different pieces. The first piece was really the first phase when we launched it five years ago, and this was what can we use outside of opioid pain medication to get relief of suffering and pain in the emergency department. So that was phase one of ALTO, and we were very successful. We reduced our discharge opioid prescriptions by about 80%. And patients were doing wonderful. And then the second phase was patients who are suffering from opioid use disorder, which is about 2 million Americans. We have to treat this. We have to treat this as a medical disease, as the brain disease it is. We didn't want to refer them out. We didn't want to tell them to hang on. We wanted to address it right then and there. We also used peer recovery specialists at that time as well to really engage them in a peer-to-peer -peer discussion about recovery. And then the last piece is harm reduction. Patients and people who are using opioids, we want to offer them safer ways to get to the point where they're ready for recovery. If they're overdosing and the Narcan is available, we need to use it. We need to wake that person up. We need to engage them. And we need to get them into recovery. So with all of this that you're doing, what kind of results have you seen either from treating chronic pain or other issues with the ALTO plan? What kind of success rate have you seen? So for acute pain in the emergency department, which is the ankle sprains or the back pain or headache, we've really seen a significant reduction. Our dispensation or how many opioids we give in the emergency department is down at least by 50%. But patients still have the same pain relief as they did before. So we're giving a lot less opioid and having the same result. If you have other patients and uh, they may not you be as um, a comprehensive of a program. Do you have advice for people who are in chronic pain or maybe somebody who's gonna have surgery, wisdom to that, whatever, what kind of conversations they should be having with their doctors? They should just be asking, so what's the plan, doc? Tell me what's the expectation for the amount of time I'm gonna have pain. What do you think you're gonna prescribe after the procedure so I'm aware up front? Are there any risks to the medication you're giving me? And there's something called informed consent. I'm going to give you this. I need your consent. You know, you're an autonomous person. You have the right to refuse. But I'm going to have a conversation with you to let you know all the risks and all the benefits. That's the discussion we need to have with opioids. One other question here is having that conversation, sometimes people are embarrassed or they are thinking, I must be weak. There's a stigma. In terms of opioid use disorder, right. talking about it. Yes, so opioid use disorder, unfortunately, it's very, very sad that historically in medicine, I mean going back hundreds of years, historically physicians and society have considered substance use disorders just to be a moral failing. It's a voluntary moral failing and people just don't care. But now, with the evidence we have, we really see it is a brain disease. It actually becomes an involuntary thing. So we have to really empathize. It requires counseling, but it requires social connection and empathy. The more we use non-stigmatizing language like opioid use disorder instead of addict, instead of clean versus junkie, we need to use medical language first at the healthcare system level, and then we just need to have empathetic support with social connections for the human beings that are suffering from this medical disease we call opioid use disorder.